I'm on my way to church and I typically take the train, walk through the Boston Public Garden to look how beautiful it is today. I want to dedicate this to my friend Terry Brennan from Pan American Christian Academy who really inspired me with her post last night. I, I didn't get to finish saying what I wanted to say when I said I agree with Terry. And I'll go ahead and share her post because it is very touching. And one of her appeals is, if you are not right with God, to get right with God, and if you are, to basically stay on track. To be a Christian we, requires everything, everything that we have. And the only reason I'm a Christian is because I haven't been so perfect. And I have reaped the benefits of the work of somebody else who died on a cross who was perfect so that I could live a, a, a magnificent life and give everything back, everything from family to the work that I do to the devotion and showing up at church and study when possible and when capable and able to volunteer. I decided to listen to the two sermons in um, Chariots of Fire that the character played by Ian Charlson, Eric Little, talks about. Now I'm going to paraphrase and meld the two because they've been inspirational to me for the last 40 years. Apparently when this movie came out, it was really needed. Apparently, the, the, from what I have watched in documentaries, the British people were going through something pretty big. And this, this movie galvanized not just the spirit of the British people, but people all over the world who were inspired by the courage of the British track team during pre-World War II Germany, uh, the Olympics that were held in Germany, in Berlin. Anyway, it is a movie worth seeing. But the two sermons that were beautiful was one where Eric Little is talking after a race that he's won and he said, everybody came out to see a race see somebody win a race and it happened to be me and as he goes into um, encouraging everybody he talks about how a race is like our faith is like a race and he says where does the power come from it comes from within and he quotes Jesus when he said the kingdom of God is within you This morning, I'm going to go ahead and insert uh, the reading from our daily bread. It was the passage where Jesus said, No greater man, uh, no greater love hath any man than to lay down his life for a friend. And my friend Terry Brennan laid down her life basically in that post that she shared yesterday because it is not popular to speak about the cross. I wish it were. I wish. I wish everybody understood the power and the love that went into what Christ did on the cross. Because I'll tell you something, it transformed my life. It did. And it continues to transform me, I pray. But she laid down her life and put her heart out there so that others might get on the right path if they're not and I will tell you something if you're not on the right path you are so close if you're still alive and living in this world you are so close it is a matter of let's say you see the path I'm on right here let's say you're over here or even out in the water you walk right over and get on this path. Now, what's the path? It's seeing who the person of Jesus is, not through the lens of what other people say he is, especially those who maybe have been hurt by the church. And it's very understandable 
with sometimes what Christians have done and done to each other to not want to be attracted to God. Gandhi once said, I love your Christ. And I'm paraphrasing and it was something like, but I'm not too fond of your Christians. And he patterned his ministry, his work, much of it, if not all of it, after the work of Christ. And then MLK came along, was the same way, and looked to Gandhi. So many leaders have um, patterned their lives after each other. And they end up just mixing and melding. And many point back to this man, Jesus, who was humble, who could have been rich but wasn't, who could have been king, but chose not to, to be the king of people's hearts over the king of the world in the present age that he lived in and to reign over a world that was bigger and grander and longer lasting than any of the kingdoms here. And this is one of the themes in one of Eric Little's, in one of Eric Little's, um, that bike, that bike rider, that cyclist was right. Typically I stop right there. He's right. Anyway. Um, he says that that the way Jesus reigns I believe this is my interpretation that the way Jesus reigns is so pure and wonderful and beautiful that it brings every king and authority down to nothing because no king or president can rule with the same love and intensity and authority that Christ can love, which starts in our hearts. The other sermon he uh, spoke of was, it was also taken from Isaiah. I love the British vernacular, Isaiah. And he says, He quotes Isaiah when Isaiah is talking about, um, oh, excuse me, it's okay, running our race that he gives, that God gives strength to the faint. And um, this is a paraphrase because I don't remember the quotes and hope to the weary and that we will walk and not faint. I don't know if you've ever been in a race and wondered if you were going to finish that road race. But when you hear the cheers of the crowd and you, you see that sermon in the background, there are a lot of um, people cheering. They're showing parts of the races during the movie uh, that take place in the movie In Chariots of Fire. So here's to you in the race that you're running. And I pray that you know how much you are loved today. Thank you very much for walking with me. I'm here. And I wish you a very blessed day. Bye-bye. And by the way, Terry, I love you. And thank you for putting your heart out there. You are an amazing lady. I love you. Bye-bye.